In the last video, I showed you some pitfalls to on-screen mixing, specifically how the eyedropper tool doesn't work very well when you're using blending modes other than normal or the opaque blending mode. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I like to use these different types of blending modes while still retaining the ability to do on-screen mixing. So let's take a look. So you can see here that one checkerboard graphic, when turned into a variety of different types of blending modes, can look very different. And that's the appeal that blending modes have for me. I can pick sort of a normal middle of the road color, pick a bizarre blending mode like linear dodge, and the resulting colors are very different than I would have expected. Say I switch that to color dodge, they're different still. This adds a lot more saturation. So what I like to use them for is color discovery. And then once I'm happy with that color, I'll make some opaque layers on top and do on-screen blending like I normally would. When it comes to painting, this part of the process still strikes me as a bit experimental. So it's gonna be hard to give you some strong recipes to follow. But for this example, let's just add some strong backlighting behind the head of this bird. So I'll make a new layer. And I'm going to try Linear Dodge, because through my experimentation, I found that this one seems good for making sort of hot, illuminated areas. So I'll quickly pick a color that's pretty dark in value, because it's going to be adding this entire value to the one that's already there. So it can get blown out pretty quick. And it's also going to be pretty saturated. And I paint it in place. And it's got this glowing radiant orange that I wouldn't have picked naturally. It sort of fades out into a pure white. Gives it sort of an angelic look. If this is what I want, this sort of overexposed glowing quality, well then I'll stop using different blending modes. I'll now make a new layer, set to the normal mode, and do my on-screen blending as I normally would. So I'll sample from the colors that are there, and paint them in with opaque paint. And in this way, I get the control that I'm used to with on-screen blending, because this is the easiest way to render for me. So I see the two as a balance. I'll occasionally use these abstract blending modes to give me some unexpected results. And if I like them, I'll make some opaque layers on top and work them into my drawing. Now, if you like this information and you want to know more about it, the series that I sell called From Grayscale to Color actually has a lot of really interesting ways to use different blending modes to add color on top of a grayscale painting. And you can find that in the store at controlpaint.com. So I hope this concept wasn't too abstract. And if you guys have any really interesting ways that you like to use blending modes in your drawings, tell us about it in the comments. This is one of those areas that I really only know specific use cases that I've found through practice. And I'm sure there's other interesting ways out there that I've just never considered. So let's hear about it. Thanks for watching.